Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain evil. This film tells the story of a delinquent boy being expelled from school because he likes to bully and eventually becomes a victim of bullying. Can he avenge all the bad boys who bullied him? Let's find out in Evil. Evil begins with a young man named Eric who is fighting with his friend. For no apparent reason, Eric beat his friend to a pulp. The rest of his friends just watched. No one tried to break up the fight for fear of Eric, who was notorious and often got into fights. Eric is then called by the principal who can no longer stand his delinquent behavior. He was immediately expelled from school. Arriving home, Eric still has to receive the caning from his stepfather for the violent incident that got him expelled from school. His biological mother, who knew this, didn't care and instead let him because she thought Eric would learn from his mistakes. After that, his mother asked him to meet his friend, Gunnar, who is a lawyer. The lawyer gave Eric his business card and told him to contact him anytime if he was involved in any kind of problem. Eric, who was confused, just looked at the business card. After Gunnar leaves, his mother tells him that she is disappointed that he was expelled from school. Then his mother said that she had enrolled Eric into a new school. His mother turns Eric into S.T. Jarnsberg, an all-boys boarding school. His mother hopes that Eric does not waste this opportunity and maintains his attitude that he will not be expelled again, because this is his last chance. Eric nodded in understanding. He promised his mother to go to school well to graduate and not disappoint his mother. Eric arrives at his new school. This time he was wearing a uniform and his hair was cut short. His roommate is Pierre, the smartest student in the school. They talked to each other and it turned out that they could immediately get along because Pierre was a friendly person. Night fell, Eric and Pierre rushed to the hall for dinner. Eric then gets acquainted with a student named Joanne who tells him that every school has its own traditions, and in this school, each student will be treated according to their social status. After Joanne said that, the student beside Eric was suddenly called by two other students sitting at the end of the table, namely Otto and Gustav. The student who was summoned earlier came from a simple family, while Otto and Gustav were the sons of wealthy nobles. Otto and Gustav who came from noble families, often bullied other students who came from ordinary families, like the student sitting next to Eric earlier. Otto and Gustav dared to act arbitrarily because of their family's great influence on this school, so they were not afraid of being expelled from school. Otto and Gustav are also part of the intra-school student organization, where they also have the power to punish students. After dinner, Pierre invites Eric to smoke for a while. At first Eric refused because he had promised his mother not to break the rules. Johan then warned that they would get severe punishment if caught smoking, but Pierre made sure they wouldn't be caught, and Eric was finally persuaded. The following day at breakfast, Otto and Gustav called for Eric. They wanted to give a welcome greeting because Eric was a transfer student and had to be taught about the traditions at this school. But he immediately refused. Because of his refusal, Johan is the one who has to bear the consequences. Otto injured Johan's head, until he was finally taken by a medical staff for treatment. In the evening, Otto and Gustav were about to prank Eric again. The two of them called Eric to their headquarters and told him to clean up the pile of dirty shoes that had piled up on the floor. Again Eric disobeyed their orders and left immediately. An annoyed Gustav then asked Otto what they should do with Eric. Otto didn't seem to want to worry about it just yet. He still looked relaxed and told Gustav to leave Eric first because he was a new student. Eric then told Pierre everything. The look on his roommate's face suddenly turned tense. Pierre then told Eric not to disobey Otto and Gustav's orders anymore because students who disobeyed them would be punished. Eric, who used to be a bully, said that he wasn't afraid of them. He also insisted that he would never obey all of their orders. In the evening, Eric and Pierre think of ways to fight Otto and Gustav's bullying at school without violence. But it seemed difficult to do because the students chose to obey Otto and Gustav's orders rather than get bruises all over their bodies. The next day, Gustav accidentally bumps into Eric who is walking down the school corridor. Gustav then told Eric to apologize, but Eric refused because he felt he didn't hit him. It was Gustav himself who accidentally hit him. Gustav was then furious and challenged Eric to a fight at a predetermined place at night. Eric was then invited by Pierre and Johan to the battle arena that Gustav referred to. Pierre explained that Otto and Gustav never fought fairly. They would call their friends and gang up on Eric. That night, Eric had intended to accept Gustav's challenge and fight with him, but then he gave up and remembered his mother's message to always behave well to graduate from school. After returning to the room, Pierre invited his friend to smoke to relieve fatigue. In the battle arena, Otto and Gustav had been waiting for Eric for a long time, but because he never showed up, Otto thought that Eric was too cowardly and called him a rat, followed by his minion's cheers. The next day, Otto calls the names of students who often get punished and disobey orders from members of the intra-school student organization, and one of them is Eric. After being in the courtroom, Otto, as the student council president, charged Eric with a full month's imprisonment and he was also required to dig a one-meter deep trench around the school area. Eric digs trenches until late, so he has to eat alone in the hall because his work is done after dinner. 
When Eric was eating alone, a canteen employee named Marja approached him. Marja, who seems interested in Eric, says that he reminds her of her brother. Marja then said that Eric's attitude was somewhat similar to that of his brother, who both did not want to submit to the arbitrariness in front of their eyes. As usual, Eric often smokes briefly after eating. When he was smoking alone, Marja suddenly came. Marja tells Eric that smoking is not good for health and she thinks about the smell of Eric's breath. Marja then kissed and hugged him tightly. In fact, both Eric and Marja know that the school strictly forbids students from having romantic relationships with school staff. The punishment is unmitigated. They will be expelled from school and the employee will be fired immediately. But apparently that night Eric and Marja didn't care about the rules. During the Christmas holidays, Eric returned home. His mother welcomes him but not so with his stepfather. His stepfather immediately questioned why he got so many punishments even to the point of being suspended. Eric answered honestly. He had disobeyed the orders of a student who turned out to be the son of a noble and powerful in the school. His stepfather even replied that a noble's son should be flattered and obeyed. Because Eric's report cards are bad and he gets a lot of punishment at school, he receives another caning from his stepfather. His mother, who knew her child's suffering, just let it go. The Christmas holidays are over and Eric is finally back at school. Eric rushed to meet Marja because he really missed her. Eric and Marja then let go of longing under the moonlight by fondling each other. Knowing that Eric has returned to school, Otto and Gustav again devise a plan to prank him. This time they intend to splash dirt while Eric is sleeping. Their plans, of course, never failed. Eric and Pierre immediately woke up and cleaned their room of the dirt that Otto had splashed. But Eric did not remain silent. He intended to avenge Otto and Gustav's actions. He took the remnants of dirt, then sneaked into Otto's room and splashed the dirt while Otto was sleeping soundly. The following day while in the dining hall, Eric deliberately chirps loudly for all the students to hear. He said do you guys smell this awful poop, then deliberately sniffed here and there, until finally stopping in front of Otto who was eating his breakfast. Eric then tells everyone that the smell of dirt comes from Otto. Hearing this, Otto immediately became furious because Eric dared to mock him. He punched Eric in the face until he was battered, but Eric still didn't reply to Otto's punch because he promised his mother. Marja, knowing this, immediately told Otto to stop. Unable to subdue Eric, Otto and Gustav then change their target. They are now targeting Pierre, who is Eric's roommate and his only friend at this school. Otto called Pierre while they were in the dining hall, but Pierre turned it down because he felt he had done nothing wrong with Otto. Otto wasn't at his wit's end. He then challenges Pierre to a fight after the last class is over and if he doesn't come, Otto threatens to punish him. Otto and Gustav deliberately aim for Pierre to annoy Eric. Eric certainly wouldn't stand by watching his best friend being ganged up on by Otto and his minions. After that, they would gang up on Eric, and there would be no more students who disobeyed Otto and Gustav. That evening, Pierre is forced to accept Otto's challenge. The youth had come to the battlefield alone, while Otto and Gustav were surrounded by their followers. Pierre tried to fight Otto, but their body postures are quite different. Pierre fell to the ground with just a few light strokes from Otto. Eric's whereabouts are unknown, even though his best friend was wincing in pain to be the butt of Otto and his minions. When Pierre had completely fallen, Eric had just arrived and couldn't do anything because it was too late. Eric then took Pierre to the room and treated his wound. He then let Pierre rest and came out of the room. He meets Marja and they make love until morning comes. In the morning, Eric, worried about Pierre's condition, immediately rushed back to his room. To Eric's surprise, his room was empty and Pierre was already gone. Pierre even took his belongings with him which indicated that he would not return to school again. Pierre only left a letter apologizing for his sudden departure. Pierre said that Eric was a good friend of his and advised him not to give up and continue to fight the arbitrariness of Otto and his henchmen and quell the injustices that often occur in this school. Eric got up and revealed his true identity. He was determined to avenge Otto and his henchmen for their cruel treatment of his friend and the other students. He goes to Gustav in the dining hall and challenges them to a fight in the arena in an hour. Eric, who is alone, fights Gustav and von Schenken whose posture is bigger and stronger than him. But the two young delinquents just talked big and relied on their parents. Eric, who was also a delinquent, was able to take them down without much exertion. Eric then threatens Otto who is in shock because he managed to defeat his most powerful minions. Eric tells Otto that he is Eric's next target. However, before replying to Otto, Eric goes to the school kitchen to look for Marja. A female employee tells Eric that Marja has left school because she has been fired. She then handed a letter from Marja to him. Eric was devastated by the sudden departure of Marja, like Pierre. One of Otto's henchmen catches Eric getting a letter from a female employee at the school. He immediately reported it to Otto. He then raided Eric's room and ordered his minions to search Eric's belongings. They then found a letter from Marja. Otto then reads it and finally he finds out that Eric and Marja are having a secret affair. Obviously, Otto used the letter to kick Eric out of school. He immediately handed over the evidence of the serious violation to the principal. The principal called Eric 
who then kicked him out of school without any consideration because he had committed a serious offense like Marja. Eric accepts his punishment gracefully. However, he asked the principal to return the letter from Marja because it was the only memory of her. The principal refused, and then put it in a drawer. Eric then intends to avenge Otto for all the misfortunes that happened to him while in ST Jarnsburg. After all, he has also been expelled from school, so he could do whatever he wanted to Otto. He then looks for Otto and finds him walking in the woods alone. He immediately confronted Otto and threatened him with a stick. He made Otto kneel down. Unexpectedly, Otto immediately obeyed his orders. Otto, who looked panicked, then offered Eric $10,000 so that he wouldn't kill him. But Eric refused. When Eric prepares to hit Otto, he cries hysterically, pleads with Eric to spare his life, then vomits. Eric then cupped Otto's face and said he would not kill him because he was different from Otto who liked to oppress the weak. Eric then returned to school to pack things. Then he remembered Gunnar who said Eric could contact him if there was a problem at school. Eric immediately called Gunnar and not long after, the lawyer arrived in ST Jarnsburg. After telling Gunnar his problem, Eric came to the principal who was drinking with the teaching staff in his room. Eric pleads not to be expelled from school and that the letter from Marja be returned to him. At first the principal refuses, but then Gunnar walks into the room and threatens to publicize the caste and bullying culture among the students and is intentionally left by the principal and other staff members at the school. The principal also has no other choice but to grant all of Eric's requests and dissolve the student council led by Otto. Long story short, Eric is very grateful to Gunnar because he can return to school and overthrow the authoritarian rule of Otto and his henchmen. Eric spends his days at school peacefully, until the day of his graduation. His mother is very proud and happy with all her son's achievements during his schooling in ST Jarnsburg. Even so, his stepfather is still unhappy because Eric gets bad grades on attitude assessments at school. As his stepfather prepares to flog him, Eric fights back and says this is the last time there will be violence in this house. Then Eric kicked him out of his house. Sometime later, Eric finally met Pierre who was going to Geneva to continue his education. They then promised to meet again someday. The film ends.